FNAF World is honestly one of the most underrated titles in the entire series, with a multitude of different characters you get to play as. You embark on an adventure, taking your dream team to go kill Scott. Wait, that's really the plot? Well, as with most games where you can play as different characters, especially a game with 48 different characters, not every single one will be a banger to play as. So, in this video, I'm going to be ranking every single playable FNAF World character from worst to best. All 48 characters who can be part of your party will be included, even the Halloween characters. Now, this is just my opinion. I'm not an expert, so let me know in the comments whether you agree with my release or not and where I could improve. And also, thank you so much for 20,000 subscribers. You are all amazing. If you haven't subscribed, that's okay, you can do it now. And if you are subscribed, just double check for me. Anyways, enough self promo, let's get on to the ranking. Also, watch at the end for an exclusive tease, you don't want to miss that. SHUT THE fuck. At the bottom of the list, we have the king of useless debuff abilities, Phantom Freddy. While I used to think this guy was pretty good due to Sludge, Sludge isn't actually that good. It's not the worst ability in the game, but it's not a game changer by any means. Sludge would be like a D tier ability. And then, we look at his other attacks, Gloomsong and Many Day, and we can clearly see that unless you are desperate to shower your enemies in debuffs, which don't really work, then Phantom Freddy is pretty much useless, and deserves his spot as the worst character in all of Phantom Freddy's world. If Phantom Freddy is so bad, then what makes Phantom BB better? Well, quite literally, just one different ability. Toxic Balloon is not a terrible move, and it can actually do damage, but Phantom BB still sucks so much. Despite the fact that Withered Freddy is unironically my favourite Withered animatronic, I have to admit that in FNAF World, he is absolutely useless. Gloomsong is, again, not that good. Mark Toss is okay, but still trash, and his only somewhat decent move is Escape Key, which is one of the two insta-kill moves along with Unscrew. However, the chance of you actually hitting this is so low, and even with the benefit that it could kill more than one enemy, it's still really not worth it. As much as I wish Withered Freddy would be a better character, I unfortunately have to put him at number 46. One day, my friend. And now we move on from the FNAF 2 Freddy to the other FNAF 2 Freddy, otherwise known as the ChatGPT version of Freddy. The first of the beginning characters of this list, Toy Freddy is honestly really boring to play as, and his moves are actually trash. Mike Toss is pointless, Party Favors is okay, but it's so weak it's basically useless, and while Speed Song is okay, there are definitely better characters with his ability, so for that reason, Toy Freddy gets to chill out where he is. Mangle is only slightly better than Toy Freddy, and I do mean slightly. Prize Ball and Poppers just have more use than Party Favors and Speed Song. However, they are still not good moves at all, but again, one of the beginner characters, so it's expected. Now for the character that I have a personal vendetta against. The child, or as I like to call him, the little shit. Balloon Boy has one decent move, and I mean slightly decent move, with hot cheese. But balloons and munchies are honestly not even worth it, and for that, Balloon Boy deserves to be where he is. Though, I wish Withered Freddy could be better so we could overcome the BB slander. Comment justice for Withered Freddy, and hopefully, Scott makes Withered Freddy overpowered in Father Freddy's World 2. Anyways, back to the list. Alright, the first Chica on the list, and trust me, 9 times out of 10, Chica is the weakest character in Father Freddy's World. You'll see what I mean by that later. So anyways, Toy Chica is the first character who has an insta-kill move, or a move that can insta-kill with Water Hose. However, you need your enemy to be below 30% health, which at that point, you should be able to kill them with any other move. Her other two moves, Cupcake and Birthday, while being better than some of the previous moves, are still overall not even worth it. Plus, she just looks dumb. But yeah, Toy Chica is bad. Now for the weakest of the Final Fantasy 1 crew, Chica. Like I said, Chica's in FNAF World suck. Being a healer character, it would be nice if she had actually good healing abilities, but there are way better healing abilities than what Chica is offering, and unfortunately, she's just pretty much useless. Our first member of the famous Screw Crew, JJ, is not very good. Basically being Balloon Boy with Unscrew, which is a decent move. Despite what people say, Unscrew is actually a good move, and it kind of saves JJ. But there are way better characters with this move, so we shall move on. Next, we have everyone's favorite puppet, 
well, the puppet. All of their moves are kinda trash, but they are more decently balanced than all the previous characters, but they are really not that good. I mean, Prize Ball 2 is an okay ability, and so is Escape Key, but like, really, who is going to actually use the puppet? Wait, what do you mean they're called the marionette? That's a name for actually good characters, get out of here. The king of insta-kills, Shadow Freddy is pretty much a slot machine as a character. This guy features both Unscrew, Escape Key, and Water Hose. I mean, someone had to be the insta-kill man, although that does make him pretty trash. If this guy can actually land his moves, he's OP, but the chances are you won't, so normally he just acts as a lottery ticket that you can never win. Once again, an awesome character reduced to a trash pal in Final Freddy's world. One day, Shadow Freddy will return and be the best he's ever been. And here we are, the man, the myth, the legend, Freddy Fazbear. So yeah, he's pretty mid. He's basically just the middle ground for the beginner FNAF crew. All his moves are pretty basic and kinda terrible, but he's a serviceable character for the start of the game, but he's honestly super useless once you can upgrade to any other character. Toy Bonnie may be a menace in Final Fantasy II, but he's kinda pathetic in this game. Fast Jam is the best starter move in my opinion, simply due to the amount of damage it can do early game, but after that it's pretty much useless. His other abilities, Munchies and Prize Ball, are basic moves and aren't really serviceable. Although all the Phantoms suck, Phantom Mangle does have a couple of abilities that aren't completely trash, like Toxic Bite and Pizza Will 2. Basically just an upgrade past the beginner crew, but it is still pretty weak all things considered. Foxy is not a bad character, and he does have some good moves. Although it's not the best, Hot Cheese is one of my favourites, though there's a better one. I don't know, something about that cheese just really does it for me. Makes me hungry anyways. <laughs> anyway, Foxy also has Jump Scare, which can stun enemies and is meant to be a great move. Well, it would be if I was allowed to move after using it. Yeah, I don't know, I've never been a fan of Jump Scare, and I think it's overrated to be completely honest, but Foxy is a serviceable character, especially early game. Phantom Puppet is just Foxy, but a bit stronger. Plus, Mystery Box 2 is slightly better than the Hook Attack, though it's still not a great move. Overall, Phantom Puppet is just Foxy, but better. Phantom Chica has Sludge, but they also have Unscrew and Toxic Bite, so they are definitely not the worst character. There are stronger characters with Sludge, however, so Phantom Chica can say what they are. Pretty much the same as Phantom Chica, but instead of Sludge, we have Jump Scare, which I know I said was useless, but it's still better than Sludge. So they are the best Phantom, but the Phantoms overall still suck. Sorry Phantom Foxy. So the last of the starting characters, Bonnie is easily the strongest. Granted, he's still not good, but hey, at least he can do something. And he has Happy Jam, which is a better healing ability than anything else. But yeah, he kinda is just a really nice starting character, and he is always the last character I swap out when replacing my starting team. In some cases, I have even kept him to the end of the game, but it's not likely I do this. Now the Endo Plush is the last of the completely trash characters. Neon Wall is a good ability, although even though this character has Neon Wall, the other moves suck. And the plush is the only character that has Water Hose 2, which insta-kills anyone below 50% health. But again, at that point in the game, what's even the point? With the Chica is leagues against with the Freddy, unfortunately. And even though she still has some basic abilities, she's still quite good. Prize Ball 2 is way better than 1, and Bite and Cupcake are a decent combo. She's pretty good support. Withered Bonnie is the first character to have Unscrew 2, which is the same as 1 but with a 50% chance to hit instead of 30, which surprisingly is way more. Still useless on bosses though, however. Their other moves, I-Beam and Pizza Wheel, are decent attacks as well, so Withered Bonnie is pretty good. Now, I used to think that the Paper Pals sucked for the longest time, and to be honest, I still kind of think they do. But Mimic Ball is a very powerful move. It allows you to repeat any move, meaning any attack is two attacks. Every heal is two heals. It's a very powerful move, and I love it. Sure, the other moves Paper Pals have suck, but they have Mimic Ball, so what's else to say? 
Withered Foxy should really be lower, but I just love hot cheese too. Yes, beat me up in the comments. I'll let you. I don't know, I just really like playing as him. He's really fun. Plus, Rainy Days is a nice bonus. But yeah, he definitely should be lower if I'm being completely honest. But it's my list, so whatever. Here we are, the halfway point, and we have Nightmare Bonnie, our weakest nightmare. Don't get me wrong, Nightmare Bonnie is still pretty decent. Rainy Day 2, Bite 2, and Pizza World 2 are all decent abilities, but he's still not an exceptional character, so I have to leave him where he is. Now, we are starting to get into the good characters. Nightmare Chica is definitely a step up from Bonnie. She has Bad Pizza, which is a pretty good attack, Bite 2, which is an okay attack, and Water Hose, which sucks, but she's not a bad pick at all. Plus Trap is Nightmare Chica, but better. Bad Pizza, Toxic Bite, and Sludge. And yes, while Sludge sucks, it pairs better with the other abilities, and as such, they rock. I've seen many people say Golden Freddy is trash, and I don't understand why. Sure, he's an amazing, I mean Jump Scare and Rainy Day 2 are kinda average, but Haunting is one of the best debuff moves in the entire game. Honestly, Golden Freddy is my favourite FNAF character of all time, and he's one of my favourite characters to play as in FNAF World. Comment, love for Golden Freddy. I don't even know. Nightmare Foxy is a banger character. Bite 2, Unscrew 2, and Hot Cheese 2. My favourite combo. Okay, all jokes aside, I do really like this character, and his moves are actually really good, and for that, he gets number 20. The guide of the game, who will explode if you use this character. <laughs> I don't know, this game is weird. However, I'll be honest, although Fredbear is a decent character, he isn't anything special. He does have Mimic Ball and Megabyte, but like he's nothing special. And I'll be honest, even though he's really rare, he's really disappointing. Springtrap is a pretty good character, and Springlocks are a really good attack. However, Bite 2 and Rainy Day are pretty mid in comparison, so I guess Springtrap won't come back. And here we have Nightmare, who I'll be completely honest, is not as good as I remember. Sure, he's actually not that bad at all. I mean, Mega Bite, Rainy Day 2, and Toxic Bite are quite good moves, but he's really nothing special. Kinda disappointed. Here we have the first character from the Halloween update, also known as the Gods, Purple Guy. Being the weakest of the Gods, he does have Slasher, which is an absolutely powerful move, if it actually hits, since it only has a 10% chance to hit, which is kinda low. His other two moves are Speed Song and Hocus Pocus, which aren't bad moves, but they aren't amazing moves. Overall, he's more of a debuff character, which is kinda sad. Nightmare Balloon Boy is honestly a bit of a letdown considering how cool he looks. I mean, Balloons 2 is pretty cool, having 30 balloons instead of 3, kinda overkill but whatever. Megabyte is pretty cool, and Bubble Breath, well it's only useful in one area, so take for what you will. Okay, I know what you're saying. How is Nightmare Freddy so high? And I'll tell you why. Freddles. Yes, believe it or not, Freddles is an absolutely overpowered move and I love it so so much. Sure, he has Sludge, but paired to Freddles, it works so much better. Plus, he's just so much fun, and he looks so cool. Nightmare Fredbear is basically just a stronger version of Nightmare Freddy with Toxic Bite and Mega Bite with Freddles. Honestly, just a super great character. Probably one of the rarest characters in the game, Spring Bonnie is super underrated. Cosmic Song may destroy your bitrate, but also completely destroys the enemy team. Combine that with Springlocks and Happy Jam 2, one of the best healing abilities in the game, and you have an absolute unit of a character. Honestly, I would place them higher just for the sake of enjoyment, but these next few characters are just overpowered as all hell. While Hocus Pocus is, well, Hocus Pocus, get it, anyway, it's the only somewhat bad move Mr. Chipper has. Buzzsaw is an absolutely overpowered move, and combined with Mimic Ball, Mr. Chipper is a super overpowered character and a must have. Unless, of course, you have the next few characters. I know the Endos are stupidly high up, but they are some of the best characters in the game. Endo 1's debuff songs are actually really good, and that combined with the Endo army, one of the best support attacks in the game, and you have yourself a must have and a keeper for the team. Plus, he's just so handsome. 
The Crying Child is literally the exact same as Ando One, but instead of Ando Army, they have gift boxes. Now, you may be wondering, what is gift boxes? Well, literally the best move in the entire game. This move will both revive your dead teammates and give each member a present which gives them an extra life, meaning as long as that character who has the ability doesn't die, you won't. It's a super overpowered move, and although Crying Child is just support, they are super useful as gift boxes is just so overpowered. And now, we are at the final eight, the best characters to have on both your teams, so let's rank them. At the bottom of the Dream Team, we have the High Endo, I mean Endo 2 I mean look at him! Along with the Endo Army, he also has Neon Wall and Speed Song, which just complement each other perfectly, and I've been honest, he's just so much help and so much fun to play as. Another gift boxer, RVXQ, or Shadow Bonnie as it just should be fucking called, has Haunting and Mimic Ball, making him easily one of the strongest characters in the game or at least the base game, since the Halloween update adds a lot of powerful characters, so let's go. Now, I know what you're all thinking. Should Nightmare Yon be higher? He has 4th Wall! 4th Wall is the most powerful attack in the entire game, able to wipe out teams of enemies and dealing up to 5000 damage. And while that is true, what other abilities do they have that are good? Oh that's right, none. Yes, this character is probably the easiest Halloween character to actually get, which does make him stand out a bit more, but this guy just has 4th Wall, which is awesome, but you know, I can't place him any higher than he already is. Jacko Bonnie, he has Slasher, Overpowered, he has Haunting, awesome, and he also has Chaco Bomb, which is another super powerful attack. This guy is just super powerful, but not as powerful as... Jacko Chica is basically the same as Jacko Bonnie, but I think that Buzzsaw is a way better move than Slasher if I'm being completely honest, or at least more consistent. Plus, Jacko Chica is just way, way easier to get than Jacko Bonnie, so they have that. Also, remember at the start of the video when I said that 9 times out of 10, Chica was a bad character? Well, here's the 1 out of 10 where they are actually a good character. But anyways, here we are, the top 3. Taking home the bronze, we have the man himself, Scott Cawthon. And yes, you can fight Scott with Scott. Starting with Neon Wall, while it's not as good as some other moves, it's pretty good for defense. Fourth Wall is back, which is just overpowered and awesome as ever. But they also have Mega Virus, another stupidly powerful attack, which makes Scott the most powerful attacker in the entire game. Though the defense is a bit lacking, but not with this next character. Yes, I place Funtime Foxy above 99% of the gods, sue me. No, but in all fairness, Funtime Foxy is an absolute giga chat of a character. For starters, they have Cosmic Song, which while it's not as powerful as 4th Wall, is still a super awesome move and deals a lot of damage. Next up is Happy Jam 2, an overpowered healer, and finally, Gift Boxes. Funtime Foxy is just such a balanced character, covering all bases of attack, healing, and support. Phantom Foxy in FNAF World is quite possibly a perfect character, however they lose out on the gold due to one character. One super overpowered character that no one will ever be able to beat in a 1v1. A character so powerful that it haunts my dreams, dictates my likes, and drags me closer to my death. Wait, what am I even on about? Oh, just roll the clip. And at number 1, we have The Coffee Machine, who is both the best character in Final Fantasy's world and in real life. God knows I depend on it. Oh yeah, time to make a coffee. <laughs> Anyways, now where to start with this character? Well, for starters, they have Gift Boxes, the most overpowered move in the entire game. And that alone is awesome, as we've already seen. But the coffee machine also has Mega Virus, which is a super powerful attack, one of the most powerful in the game. And finally, Neon Wall 2, which makes your entire team invincible for 5 seconds. Meaning if timed right, you can block 4th wall attacks. This character is a must have if you can. And although getting them is super hard, since you need to beat Freddy in space without any upgrades, it's definitely worth it. Coffee, we salute you and crown you as the best character in all of Final Freddy's world. 
And there we have it, every single FNAF World character ranked from worst to best. This video was a lot of fun, and I hope you are ready for November 11th when I rank every single FNAF character. So make sure to subscribe, and of course, thank you all for 20,000 subscribers. Now, I promised that at 20,000 subscribers, I would show off a teaser for my upcoming fan game, Fazbear Investigation. Well, it isn't just mine. It's Dingo, Vonnie, and of course, Sticky Key Productions have been working on it too, so make sure to check them out in the description below. But anyways, without further ado, here is the teaser. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy.